This video is part of my complete practical CCNA course, where I show you how to configure Cisco network devices in preparation for the CCNA exam. Now, rather than using simulators or emulators, I'm using real physical Cisco devices. But not only that, I'm using modern network devices such as this 9200CX Cisco switch. The goal here is to teach you networking practically so that you can pass the CCNA exam, but also use this knowledge in the real world. In this video, we're covering security fundamentals, specifically 5.7, configure and verify layer two security features, DHCP snooping, dynamic op inspection and port security. This is the first video in the DHCP snooping section. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to hack DHCP using a simple Python script, as well as an application running within Kali Linux. If you don't enable DHCP snooping, it's really easy to exhaust the DHCP pool or scope and basically stop devices from getting IP addresses on a network. I'll also show you how to set up a rogue DHCP server so that clients, such as the Windows 11 computer over there, receive IP addresses from the rogue DHCP server, but in addition, have their default gateway configured as the Kali Linux machine so that when they go to the internet or other subnets, their traffic is sent via Kali Linux so that we can intercept their traffic and capture usernames and passwords as well as other information. We are therefore setting up a man in the middle attack by firstly exhausting the DHCP pool on this Cisco router so that IP addresses are no longer allocated from the router. When this device requests an IP address, the Kali Linux machine will offer an IP address to the client with the default gateway set to Kali, which once again means that all traffic that's sent to the internet or a different subnet is sent via Kali and we can capture usernames and passwords. So for the CCNA exam, you need to know how to configure DHCP snooping so that you can stop these kinds of layer two attacks. DHCP snooping is a security feature that acts like a firewall or access control list between untrusted hosts and trusted DHCP servers. We are going to, by default, trust no one. So everyone is untrusted, all ports are untrusted. But where we have legitimate DHCP servers, we will trust those ports so that DHCP messages such as offers are allowed from those ports. No DHCP messages from servers will be allowed on any other ports. Okay, but before I show you how to configure DHCP snooping, let me show you the problem using this Kali virtual machine running on this laptop. It's connected to Gigabit 101 on this 9200 series switch. Gigabit 102 is connected to the Cisco router. This is a Cisco Quadruple One 8P router. At the moment, the Windows computer is not connected to the switch, but I'll connect the Windows computer to port Gigabit 1011 to demonstrate the problem and run the man in the middle attack. Now on the first attack, I'm running a simple Python script to exhaust all IP addresses on the DHCP server. You do not need to know the Python script for the CCNA exam, but I think it's really important that for the real world, you learn Python and see how Python can be leveraged in attacks such as this. This is a DHCP starvation attack. We are firstly importing Scapy. Scapy allows you to create all kinds of packets in Python. We are not going to check the response IP address against the sending IP address, that's not required. This is the important part. We are sending out an ethernet frame into the network with a destination MAC address of broadcasts. So in other words, it's a broadcast packet. The source MAC address is a random MAC address. Source IP address is a bunch of zeros. Destination IP address is a broadcast. Source port number is UDP 68, destination port number 67. So in other words, we're trying to get an IP address from a DHCP server. We are setting the DHCP option to discover. So it's a discover packet. So it's a DHCP discover message. And we're gonna send that packet into the network and we're going to loop it. So Ethernet zero on our Kali Linux machine is gonna have these packets just continuously being sent into the network. Now I've connected to the console of my Cisco router. So on the router, show IP, DHCP binding. At the moment, no IP addresses have been leased. DHCP has been configured on this router, but no addresses have been allocated. If I look at my pool, so show IP DHCP pool, you can see we have 254 addresses in the pool, 10 are excluded, none have been leased. The range of addresses is this. The current index, is 192.168.1.7. That's the next IP address that will be allocated. If we do a show run, you can see that this DHCP pool has been configured. The network is 192.168.1.0. 
slash 24 mask. Default gateway is the local router. So show IP interface brief will show that. So the legitimate default gateway is 192.168.1254. That is the layer three interface for these layer two interfaces on the Cisco router. Show run again. DNS server is Google, but notice we've got some excluded addresses. 192.168.1.1.2.5. The reason dot six isn't the next available IP address is that was previously allocated to a device. And then I clear the DHCP bindings. I've also excluded these addresses, 250 to 254. So again, show IP DHCP pool. Notice current IP address range is this. We have 10 excluded addresses. None have been leased at the moment. Okay, so that looks fine. If I plug in my Windows computer, it would get an IP address from this range. But what I'm gonna do is on Kali Linux, open up a terminal. Alice shows us that we've got a bunch of Python scripts here. The one that we're going to run is this basic DHCP starvation script. So if I cat DHCP starvation.py, you'll see that that is the script I've just shown you. So what I'm gonna do is run sudo python3 DHCP starvation.py. Now, just before I press enter, again, show IP DHCP pull. No addresses have been leased. I'll press enter, put in my pseudo password. A whole bunch of DHCP messages are sent into the network. And notice we're seeing here address conflict. Show IP DHCP pull. Notice 243 addresses have been leased. Show IP DHCP binding. We can see a whole bunch of addresses have been allocated. So basically the entire address pool has been allocated to these random MAC addresses. I don't know if you can hear that, but the fan on my laptop is starting to go crazy because I'm sending so many packets into the network. So what I'll do here is press control C. You can see 87,340 packets were sent into the network. Therefore, the entire DHCP pool has been exhausted or scope if you want to use a Windows term. But notice all addresses have been allocated. Again, show IP DHCP pool. All the addresses have been used up. No addresses are available for another client. Current index is 0.0.0.0. 100% of addresses have been used. Total addresses, the least addresses excluded. No addresses are currently available in the pool. So that's the first attack. On the Windows computer, this network adapter is currently unplugged. So what I'll do is launch the attack again, just to make sure that no addresses become available. And I'll plug that cable into port 11 on the switch. So what you can see, it's saying identifying. And if I open up PowerShell and type IP config, what you'll notice is on Ethernet 10, we haven't been given an IP address. We see an IP address of 169.254.247.192 saying identifying here. If you remember, this is APIPA addressing or automatic private IP addressing. This device hasn't received an IP address from the DHCP server. So I'll clear the screen and type ipconfig slash renew and try and get another IP address. In the meantime, I'm sending all of these requests from the Kali Linux machine. I'll back on the router. Notice we have no IP addresses available and that's because we are continually sending DHCP messages into the network from the Kali Linux machine, which is basically exhausting all IP addresses from the pool. As you can see here, it says an error occurred while renewing interface Ethernet 10, unable to contact your DHCP server request has timed out. If I look at my IP address, notice 169.254.247.192. So no IP address can be allocated to this machine because of my Python script that's exhausting all of the IP addresses. Now the fans on this computer are going mad. So what I can do now is stop that attack. As you can see here, 359,000 odd packets have been sent out into the network. The fan on this computer is going mad because of the number of packets that are being sent by this Python script. But as you can see, a very simple Python script can break a network, exhaust the IP addresses in a DHCP pool, which means that no IP addresses will be allocated to legitimate hosts in a network. Now, once you've exhausted the DHCP pool on the router, what you could do as an example is set up a rogue DHCP server. So in Kali, I'm gonna go to sniffing and spoofing and run Etacap. It asks me for my pseudo password, so I'll put that in. And there you go, there's Etacap, very simple software to use. Sniffing is set to run at startup. The interface that I'm gonna be using is Ethernet zero. So if I open up another terminal and type IP address, you can see that Ethernet zero is 
our Ethernet interface with IP address 192.168.1.250. So we're gonna be sniffing traffic on that interface. And then what I can do is click this little accept option. And now on the world option, I can go to man in the middle menu and I can set up a DHCP spoofing. So before I launch that, what we've done is taken out the DHCP server on the router. We're gonna set up this Kali machine as a rogue DHCP server to allocate IP addresses to the Windows computer, but have the Windows computer use Kali as its default gateway so that we can sniff traffic going to the internet as an example. So as you can see here, we're seeing a bunch of discover messages, but what I'll do now is set up DHCP spoofing and set up a pool of addresses, let's say 192.168.1.100 to 125, set up a mask of 255, 255, 255, 255, 0, and I'll set up a DNS server of Google. Notice spoofing has been enabled and suddenly we see a discover message. We're offering this address to the device. So IP address being offered is 192.168.1.100. Default gateway is our cells, 192.168.1.250. DNS server is 8.8.8.8. We see a request for an IP address and that address has now been assigned. So on the Windows computer, Previously, we didn't get an IP address, but now ipconfig shows us that this IP address was allocated, but note the difference. Default gateway is our Kali Linux machine rather than the Cisco router. Now let's see if we can actually capture usernames and passwords. So on my Kali machine, what I'm gonna do is run Wireshark. Wireshark will allow us to see the traffic in the network, and I'm gonna capture traffic on ethernet zero. As you can see here, we're seeing spanning tree, CDP, and other types of traffic. But what I'll do is filter for Telnet traffic. So we see no Telnet at the moment. Now let's assume the administrator of this router did something that they should never have done, and they allowed Telnet. So in other words, you as an administrator could Telnet to the router. Notice the VTY lines have this password configured, and they are allowing all traffic in. So transport input all. Very bad idea. IP addresses on the router include this loopback address of 1.1.1.1. So what I'll do is telnet from the Windows computer to that address. So I'm gonna telnet to 1.1.1.1. I'll make this a bit bigger. So put in my password and enable password. So telnet password and enable password. So notice we've captured traffic in Wireshark. And if we scroll down through the traffic, we can see C I S C O. That's the password, Cisco. Not so nice to view it that way. So what I'll do is right click and go follow TCP stream. And hopefully you can see that the Telnet password is Cisco. I typed enable and the enable password is Cisco. Now again, it's a really bad idea to use Telnet or any other clear text protocol. You should be using SSH as an example. Let's look at another example. I'll open up a web browser to another router I have in my network. This has IP address 192.168.32.49. That's not this local router, that's another router. And just before I enter the password, what I'll do is filter for HTTP here. And notice here we see a get message, unauthorized message. Again, really bad idea to use HTTP. And what I'll do here is put in my password of Cisco Cisco. And there you go, I'm able to log into that router. But if I go to Etikap, notice we can see information such as the password, 192168. 3249, port 80, username and password information is shown there. So Etikap was able to capture the username and password because they were sent in clear text using HTTP. And in Wireshark, notice under authorization, we can see the credentials, Cisco, Cisco. So again, in today's world, you shouldn't be using clear text protocols such as Telnet, FTP, TFTP, or HTTP you should be using encrypted protocols such as SSH or TLS. So to summarize, I showed you how to use a Python script running on this Kali machine to exhaust IP addresses in the DHCP pool so that a Windows 11 computer couldn't get an IP address from a legitimate DHCP server. Then I showed you how to set up a rogue DHCP server on the Kali Linux machine, as well as to allocate IP addresses to the Windows 11 computer, but in addition, to set the default gateway to Kali so that we could run a man-in-the-middle attack to capture usernames and passwords. 
Now to stop this kind of nonsense, we want to run DHCP snooping on the switch and make sure that these ports are untrusted ports and the only trusted port is this interface to our legitimate DHCP server so that we can stop DHCP offers from the Kali machine. That once again is Dora, way to remember DHCP. So we've got to discover an offer, a request, and an acceptance message. We want to stop offers from a rogue DHCP server, for example, by enabling DHCP snooping and making this untrusted, untrusted, but allowing this to be trusted so that a discover message goes here, offer message goes back, request message here, and an acceptance message back again. Now this video is getting quite long, so I'll show you how to set up DHCP snooping in the next video. I'm David Bombal, and I wanna wish you all the very best.